Hi, it's Ray again. What I'm going to go through um, is a, a series of ways of putting pulleys or various pulling systems onto the canoe. And if you're running whitewater rivers, the, the problem is at some stage somebody's going to make a mistake. The boat can end up then jamming onto rocks. Hope first priority, of course, people and their safety. But then once everything's stabilised and you've got the boat on the rock, you've got to look at getting it off again. Now sometimes I'll be stood there for a while and uh, a bit like a diamond cutter, you, you spend a little bit of time looking which direction am I going to pull, can I actually get onto the rock and just heave home and pull it off that way. And quite often what I've done is just put a rope on and we've just got as many people as possible, sometimes called 10 boy scouts, and you just heave on the rope and heave a boat clear that way. So there's lots of things like that. However, there comes a point where you actually need to start putting um, something that's going to give you a mechanical advantage. So I'm going to look at, first of all, a Z-drag. In a second video, we'll look at a pig rig. And then a final one, which we'll need to do actually with water around, we'll look at a uh, rollover, the more complex. Okay, so we've got the starport on here. We can ignore that. That's from my camera boom. And that gives me all sorts of good camera angles when I'm paddling this one front, one back. But really looking at this cord, and what I'll do when I get a new boat, I'll check the manufacturer's cord that they put through there. Sometimes it's thinner than I would like. On one occasion, doing a Z-drag, a three-to-one pulley system, uh, we actually put enough force on it to start cheese wiring this rope through the boat. This is climbing rope. It's half rope, so it should be, I'm thinking around 14, 15 kilonewtons. That's more than enough. It's going to be weakened by the fact we've got an overhand knot behind it. It's going to be weakened by these edges. All ropes break eventually um, at the knot or at a sharp edge. So, one of the first problems is actually getting to the boat. Um, it may be that the person who swum is still with the boat, they're sitting on the rock, in which case I can use them to attach the ropes done that before now and then remove them from the situation before we actually start using the pulleys. Buds are mewing away in the background there. Um, we could perhaps get out to it by paddling another boat out and dropping somebody off to put the ropes in place. Uh, I've swum out before now but I don't want to swim from above because there's going to be rope or bits of gear in the water and whatever's blocked this I don't want to be involved with. So you've got to make quite some decisions about how you get to this. It may be easy, it may be hard. Once you've got a rope on this, you've got to decide where to pull from. One of the things that I try and do, if possible, I'll try and go higher, just try and seesaw it off. But I'll also look at which way the water is forcing it onto the rock and which way is going to be the most useful to pull. You don't always get a choice because you don't always get a choice of anchors. But sometimes pulling in one direction or upwards will make life a lot simpler. And my first instinct always is just get the boat, the rope to the bank, get as many people on it as possible and pull. No pulley systems at all. But we'll go to the pulleys. Okay, so I've got a, a variety of throw bags here. And actually in my boat, I carry two different bags. I actually carry this one, uh, which is from NRS. This one's just over two years old so it's getting quite a bit of wear and it won't be long before I replace this one. It's a very basic bag and in fact in many ways it feels a little old-fashioned but for the job I use it for it's brilliant. Uh, it's a figure of eight knot at the end and I've actually written on this one because I like the information to hand. It's got my name on it, it's got the length 22 meters but it's also got the braking strain, which is 22 kilonewtons. So this rope, even with knots in, isn't going to break or shouldn't break in any situation like that. We'll talk about the problem with, with things breaking within the system. So I really like that. That normally stays on the back of my boat. I use it as a swim line. If I take a swim, I think I can get to the shore. I take the end of the rope ahead for the shore. But it's also my main rescue bag. Then there's two other bags here, both of which I like. Uh, this is the Palm very modern style design and what they've done is just put a very small loop of tape at the bottom which is attached to the rope. That means nobody can get their hand in it which is great. Uh, so in a rescue situation that's fine. On the bag they do it nicely, they say 20 meters and 10 kilonewtons. So that's a nice bag. 
good quality rope, nice and round, nice and thick. And then finally this one, which is designed for uh, swift water rescue. And like this bag and this bag, you can actually have a harness so it fits on the waist. This one, once I take the bag out, let's just check on this. But because this is designed to be round your waist, and raft guides and like like to do that, I do that quite often now, it's on a release because you don't want it all going wrong in the water. You want to be able to release if the bags come loose on you. So here's the, the rope. Again, the, the length, 18 meters. And if I look under the flap, it's got its attachment point, which is the rope, but it's got it in a little bag. And that's a clever little thing um, because once I've attached the carabiner, the carabiner can fit in there, it's padded. So if I throw it at somebody, I'm not going to clonk them with a carabiner. Mine, I don't really mind because I'd always remember to take it off with this bag. But what it's got on there, if I open it up, it's got the water rescue rope, length 18 meters. We've already got diameter eight millimeters. Don't want to go smaller than that if you're going to use uh, pulley systems really. Tensile strength, 10 kilonewtons, so again the same as this bag. But interestingly, what they've done is they've tested it with knots in it and put that in. So once you put a knot into this rope, then the knotted tensile strength is just 7 kilonewtons. You've lost 30% of the strength before you even start. And that will be common to all the bags, it just happens that this one states it. I'm happy with all three of these. I'd quite happily take that one, or that one is the bag that I have on, on me. And this one is my main rescue bag, which is also my swim line at the back of the boat. All right, Ray, are there other ropes apart from this type? Maybe some that are slightly less bulky, for example. Um, I've got a good right hook, but I can't throw as far as maybe some people. That really is quite an important question. I don't like using rope less than these for actually the pulley systems. The, the thing is, if I'm never going to throw this 22 meters. If I'm actually using it as a throw bag or even this one, then I tend to take a good chunk of the rope out. That makes it more throwable. I also, for many years, uh, would have a heavy bag and then I would have something like the Palm Lightning or one of the um, NRS bags that's much lighter for my personal use that I'm gonna use for a person. But the moment I start pulling, putting pulley systems on it, I really want a strong rope. And I think this one, tells it really well in that I've already lost 30% of the strength. If I start out with a bag that is seven kilonewtons and I knock off 30% of that, I'm getting a bag, I'm beginning to worry about it breaking. So again, how I get to the bag uh, to the boat or the rope to the boat, somebody on it, we'll send it out, they can clip before we rescue them. Um, we can get people out there, carry them out in the canoe, we can swim out. But you've got to make decisions and you've got to keep making it safe. Take my so gonna... NRS bike, that's my favourite for this job. This tree is in the right place as my anchor. But looking at it, I've got to make a decision. Because this down here, how substantial are these two? If I put major force on it, we'll actually be able to remove it from the tree. And I think it's solid. So I'm going to go with that. It's convenient. If I was doing it for real big, big forces, I think I'd go around this whole massive tree here. If you're using boulders for this job, you might have to take ropes around them. You really want to make sure they're substantial and you really want to look at how they're sitting on the ground that they're on. I've seen incredibly big boulders, somebody said is solid, move, because they're actually sitting on a sliding surface, so there's no real big thing to slow them down. I much prefer to use trees if they're available. So creating the anchor, I'll show you what I do. I can go around the tree several times, but I'm just going to do it once so we actually see it very clearly. If it's a substantial tree and I've got a loop in each end, 
then maybe I'll just use a carabiner there. But once it's round, I'm going to tie a knot here. And the knot is very simple, it's an overhand knot. So go over the top. And come back through the hole you create. I want to make sure that runs neat. Now, again, it's going to weaken the tape. But there's also another little oddity here. Uh, Dino Held, who worked at Plus Brennan, or works at Plus Brennan, not sure now, went to a test rig to test these to destruction. And we've been using this style of knot for a while. And what he found was that the tape didn't break, but if you put enough force on it, this knot started migrating down the tapes and would eventually come off the end. So what Dino recommended, and I've never seen one of these moves, one of these move, but I'll trust Dino on this. I'm going to put a second knot below it. So I've put this second knot in to, to arrest this. And a lot of people, I, I've never been particularly worried if it's down there. I've never seen one of these shift and I've put a lot of force on them. So I'm quite happy to have it relatively loose there. But a lot of people are recommending, and it's probably good practice, to move this knot up. So it's only just below the other one. So the actual slide of the knot gains no momentum. But it's this knot that's got it, got the force on it. There's no force on this one unless this one slides. And really, this is only to stop that one moving. So what I could do now is take this rope, bring it back to my sling, and just use a carabiner there do it up I can now go back forwards and I could, if the boat's within reach Take another carabiner, put it here, screw up, come back, and I've now go back up to the boat, the rope, so the rope comes to the side, up to this carabiner, around it, back to the other carabiner, onto the boat, and back to me. So this is now a Z drive. This is a 3 to 1 pull system. Now, every bit of force I put in here is going to be magnified by 2 parts. Not quite true because we can have friction, we have inefficiency, but that's the theoretical. It's a 3 to 1 pull system. So if I now pull, if you want to increase the efficiency of this then you could use pulleys um, and looking at these and I will check very carefully this one the main load on this one is 22 kilonewtons and the load on each side is 11 kilonewtons you really don't want to go for anything much uh, lower than that first thing I do is put the pulley on and then when I put the carabiner onto this, if I put it this way round, this doesn't sit even into the carabiner and I'm not happy with that. So when I finish it up, I actually want it there sitting at that end of the carabiner. So let me just turn this so I can get it onto the tape, move it into place. And now there. I can also put a pulley onto the other end. So now having put the pulleys in, there's a little more efficiency in the system. All that works 
well if you can reach the boat to get that second carabine on to it and pull it. But very often the boat's out there, we're stuck into quite a confined space to operate. So what I've done is I've marked with that cane to say that's my working area. That might be the edge of the river, the edge of the ledge, but sometimes you're working in a very confined spot to do this. So what we need is to put an attachment onto the rope. We could put an overhand knot in, but that would be incredibly limiting because we cannot adjust it. So what we're going to do is put a press it knot on there, and that way, if we need to, we can re- So what I'm going to use is a Prusik um, loop. And in the past, if I go back into the climbing days and the like, I always made my own, that was normal. And this is five millimeter climbing cord, and that is a double fisherman's knot to actually attach it. If you do your own, make sure you've got good long ends, all knots tend to creep. Uh, but the braking strain on this is relatively low. And I'm off the top of my head and I'll put it in the notes, but by the time you put the knot in, you're probably down to five kilonewtons or less in braking strain. So put that away for a moment. So, so a modern alternative, again, it's a Prusik loop, but these are now manufactured. They've chosen a, a 5.5 millimeter cord, but this is extra strong cord. And looking at this, even with the, the stitching in it, this comes out at 22 kilonewtons. So this is no longer a weak point. Your rope is likely to be your weak point or your attachment to the boat. So this is one more worry actually taken out of the system. So I'm going to use this today. Uh, and I'm first of all going to show you my flash way of doing it. Because ever since I first saw this, I had to be able to do it myself. But this is a French Prusik. What I've done there is I've got a whole series of wraps around it. How many? Well, both ropes are dry. So I'm going to guess how many we've got there. One, two, three, four, five, five, six wraps. Uh, if it slips, then I'm going to retie it with an extra wrap on it. And all I do is carabiner these two together, and now that will bind onto the rope. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Okay. You said they're both dry. What's the significance? Why? What difference does that make? This rope is going to be wet in the situation of a rescue. And sometimes I've found that once the Prusik loop is wet, it binds more easily. So I had to do the, the flash spinning it round. I saw an instructor do that some 40 years ago and I was so impressed with it, I went and practiced. But the reality is, in the real situations, most times I will just wrap it around, get a nice smooth wrap. I'm going to guess that number of wraps, bring it together. And I don't need to do anything it, um, at this end. I don't need to to loop them through, there are various variations, but one thing is the French Prusik works very well in this context and comes undone very easily. The full Prusik knot, uh, which is the sort of knot I would use if I was climbing a rope and my body weight was on it, tends to stick, quite awkward to readjust, but it's the one I would use if my life depended on it. If I'm pulling a boat, this is far, far better. easily see the Z shape of this pull system so the main haul rope from the boat is coming up here through the pulley back down into this pulley and off to be there so we've got a nice Z shape and that again is our three to one pulley system and sometimes that's not enough to pull the boat off and once we get here we'll want to readjust for another pull but as we take the pressure off the boat is going to slide back into its original position so what I need to do is stop this rope, which is the rope going to the boat, 
going back that direction. So what I can do is put another crescent knot on here, as it clips to here, and as we take the pressure off of this, that crescent knot will hold the system, it's like a clutch, and that boat can't move back until we're ready to pull again. Here, I'm just going to do the same. I'm going to wind the rope. clutch into place I've deliberately taken it across this pulley in an attempt so that it's not pulled back into the pulley so now when I pull on this rope this is the rope with the boat on that is now stopping it from moving back down what that enables me to do is move this rope further down so I can have a second pull at it Got it right, yes I have. This is now pulling through. But if I let go, that now holds. that's the setup for a Z drag that works very well it's, it's once you get used to it, it's a quick and easy system to sort I've done it if I could in this context if this was a riverbank I would probably try to go from higher up the tree as long as I thought the tree was sound because that instead of just pulling the boat actually scissors the end up out the water so you're looking for all the advantages that you can but what we're going to look at next and uh, is where it's more complicated and we're going to use a pig rig and that will be the next video so subscribe press like thank you for watching if you've enjoyed this video please click on the like button if you'd like to subscribe please click on the icon in the bottom right corner